Let's make Suica game or watermelon game or whatever the heck it's called. Ready? Let's go. The hardest thing I found when making this game was finding art that I was happy with. I searched on Canva and eventually I found these sprites that are good enough. Now the rounder they are the better, but these will work just fine. I also grabbed all of these other art elements for the level and I'm using a cat instead of that weird little cloud thing <laughs> cause this is my video and I feel like using a cat. We're gonna wanna add a background and a box to contain the fruit in. And I separated the outline and the fill just so that I could add some mild transparency to fill in the box. And right away, I'm gonna get the collider set up that I'm gonna need. I'm gonna have one on the left, one on the right, and one on the bottom. I'm also gonna set up a trigger which is gonna determine when we lose the game. and another carbon copy of that lose game trigger called boundary, which will be used to constrain the player movement later on. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm gonna put this bubble over here, which is gonna hold our score. This one over here, and this one's gonna show us the next fruit that's gonna spawn in. And this one down here with an arrow in it. And this is just a chart to show us the order of the evolution of fruits. And I don't know why Unity doesn't have a radial layout group component built in. I wish they did, but I found a script for one online. Link is in the description. And now if we add 11 images as a child of this object, we can lay them out nicely like we want. Okay, cool. Real quick, I'm just going to animate these bubbles floating gently up and down. And finally, I'll add my little cat guy up here. So to get started, I need to set up input. So I'm going to install the input system. And I'll set up an input manager game object and throw a player input component on there. I'm also gonna set up a new input action asset and plug that into our player input and open that up. So this is pretty simple. We just wanna be able to move and throw, and that's it. And now I'll create a script called user input and attach it. And in there, we're gonna use static variables, which will update based on private input actions that we set up. Those are getting grabbed from the player input component. And then we're gonna update those in the update function, nice and easy. So now I actually wanna get the player moving. So I'm gonna create a script called player controller and in there, we're gonna need a few variables. And we're gonna grab the boundaries from that boundary trigger that we set up and constrain our movement to be within that boundary. Now I wanna set up an aim line so that we can see where we're throwing the fruit. And we're gonna do this with a line renderer component. and we'll need to set up a script to get that working the way that we want. In here, we're simply gonna update the Y position based on some simple transforms that we'll set in the game in just a minute. And update the line's points to follow the cat at that specified Y length. I'm also gonna add this to the onValidate method just so that it updates and looks correct in the editor as well. I'm gonna position this in front of the cat's face and this down here. There we go. Okay, time to throw in some fruit. So let's create a script that'll handle selecting the next fruit to spawn. And we're using two different arrays because we only wanna spawn in and use a fruit with physics after we've actually dropped one in. Before we drop it in, it's gonna be a different prefab with no rigid body and a few other mild differences. This is just gonna cause us a lot less headaches down the line. But all this is gonna do is hold what's spawning next as a reference and update the image for it in the bubble. That's all this is actually doing. But right now we actually wanna get our cat holding the fruit and then throwing it. So let's make a throw fruit controller. Here are the variables we're gonna need. And all we're doing here is at the beginning, we need to spawn a fruit in and update our bounds variable. 
Now really quick, let's set up a sprite index script, which we are going to need to find out which fruit to spawn in in just a little bit. Also, if we press the throw button, and we can throw, then we're going to grab the index we just set up and spawn in the actual physics-based fruit from the index. Change the parent object so that the cat's movement doesn't affect this fruit anymore, and destroy the old copy of the fruit. Okay, so there is a problem with how we have this set up. Currently, if we have some of the larger fruit in our hand and we drop it over here at the edge, it's just going to bounce off the top and roll off the edge, which we don't want. We don't want it to hit the walls at all, so we need to constrain our movement based on the size of the fruit that the cat's holding. So back in the player controller, we're going to create a change boundary method, which will update the size of our movement boundary based on the extent of the fruit's collider, with a tiny bit of adjustment just to be safe. So finally, we'll actually call that in our throw fruit controller so that each time our cat holds a new fruit, our bounds are going to update accordingly. All right, so now we need to actually set up all of our fruits so that we can properly test this out. Each one is going to need a circle collider and a rigid body. The scale of each one is going to gradually get larger and larger, and we'll try to get our colliders fitting as tightly as possible for each one. So those are the physics-based fruit, and they can be plugged in here. Now we're gonna make carbon copies of those, except we're gonna remove the rigid body, change the collider to trigger, and add a sprite index component for each, and make sure that that number gets updated properly for each fruit. Okay, now you can see that we can move and we can throw our fruit and you'll notice that no matter what fruit we're holding, we can just get it to the edge, but never actually over the edge. But right now we can only throw one fruit, so let's fix that real quick. We're going to add a script called Collider Informer to all of the physics fruit. And when it makes its first collision with anything, we'll say we can throw again. We'll spawn in a new fruit and pick the next fruit after that as well, and then destroy this script because it's no longer needed. Okay, there you go. We can throw in as much fruit as we want now. Now we want to get the fruit combining when they touch a match. But first, real quick, I really want to thank Unity, the sponsor of this video. I recently got a chance to play around with their remote desktop solution called Parsec. Parsec is built for work and play, enabling artists and game developers to access the power of their workstation from any PC, Mac, or even Android devices or browsers. It can handle streaming 4K at 60 frames per second with near zero latency. Getting it set up was as easy as installing the app on my computer, installing the app on Nikki's computer, hitting connect, and I was in. Parsec handles keyboards, mice, gamepads, and drawing tablets flawlessly. I hooked up a gamepad and it just worked and it felt like I was working on my computer. And it did run really smooth, but I wanted to give this a proper test with a game that requires near zero latency in order to survive. And Hollow Knight was the perfect test for this. And it played really, really well. I had a lot of fun testing out Parsec. It's intuitive and simple, yet very powerful. If you want to try Parsec out for yourself, there's a link down below to start a free 14 day trial. Okay, so next, we're going to create two scripts, one called Fruit Info and another called Fruit Combiner and attach those to all of our physics fruit prefabs. Fruit info is just gonna hold some references and update the rigid body's mass. And let's update the index of each fruit and slowly make our mass get bigger the smaller the fruit is. That actually seems to be one of the secrets of Suica game. The smaller fruit can move things around the most. And for now, you can leave the points when annihilated. We're gonna fill those in in just a minute. And in Fruit Combiner, we're only going to make them combine if they are touching fruit and they have an info script. And that script's index matches this one's index. And to make sure that this doesn't get called twice, like for example, on Collision Enter 2D getting called from both of the cherries that are touching each other, we're going to get an instance ID of each object and only let it run on the higher one to make sure that it only runs one time. Okay, now if it's a watermelon, they're going to cancel each other out and both are destroyed. And before we do anything else, we need to quickly create a script called Game Manager, attach it here, and make it a singleton. 
Okay, and back in here again. If it's not a watermelon, after finding the middle position, we spawn in a new one in the averaged position between the two fruits. Set the was combined in flag to true, which just ensures that another new fruit is not spawned in, and destroy both fruits. And there we go. If two matching fruits touch each other, they're gonna combine into the next one, all the way up to watermelon. And both of those will cancel each other out and destroy each other, which I have never actually managed to make happen. I'm not that good at this game. So we're nearly there. Now I just wanna update our points when we combine the fruit. I'm gonna create a new TextMess Pro object here and import the essentials and just change the scale up and play around with the color a little bit. And we're gonna keep track of the score in our game manager script. So let's get a reference to our text and keep track of the score with a public int. And first off, let's make sure that the text is at zero at the start of the game. And we'll create a public method to increase our score. So we only need to call this once in the fruit combiner, which will grab it from our fruit info script when two matches combine together. I grabbed the point values from this site here, link is down below. Okay, let's test. And there we go. Now we just need to add a lose condition because right now we can just keep spawning fruit in forever even if it's overflowing out of the box. And what we're gonna do is just fade a soft panel in and restart the scene and fade the panel out. So in game manager, let's add a few variables and add our public game over method. Since we're fading a panel, let's make it a coroutine that enables it, sets the alpha to zero, then lerps it up over time, and once it's hit full alpha, we'll reload the scene. Now, of course, when we do this, each time we restart the panel is gonna be in front of everything else and we won't be able to see everything. So let's use the scene loaded delegate so that we know when our scene has been reloaded. And if it has, call a method called fade game, which will run a coroutine that makes sure that the alpha is set to one then lerps it back down to zero over time and then deactivates it at the end. Okay, now we just have to call game over from somewhere. And I found that what's fair is to restart the game after the fruit has been touching the top for a certain amount of time, not instantly. That usually ends up feeling unfair. So we're gonna say 1.5 seconds. So to do that, we're gonna need to add a trigger loss script to every physics fruit prefab. And in on trigger stay 2D, we'll count the timer up. And if it reaches the limit, then we'll call game over. But if this fruit exits the trigger before that timer is up, it'll reset itself. And there you can see if we put something over our game over trigger, it'll reset after a couple of seconds. And that is Suica game or watermelon game or whatever it's called. I had so much fun making this. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you did like. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yondok, Christopher Nichols, Zondra Kessler, Fontaine Waite, Brainwaves to Binary, Couch, KB at Bird Tech Games, Ian Oral, and 60 Plus Maker, as well as our Early Access patrons, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestis, Jude Greaves, Felipe Gomez dos Santos, Ober, Francesco Latamata, Bill Guo, Alone on Mars, Alex Friedman, Danny Rathliff, Neil, Ben Kerberger, Lucky Tales, Aiden Serve, Adarsh Kumar, Merler, Anastasia Shamalina, and Petter Yurichek. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.